franchise interviews. From Easton, Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia, you're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews. Welcome to Franchise Interviews, an up-close, behind-the-scenes look at franchising and entrepreneurship. Listen to interviews with franchisers, franchisees, franchise authors, franchise experts, and attorneys. And now, welcome your host, Marty McDermott, and Franchise Interviews. Hi, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of Franchise Interviews, where for over 15 years now, we've been asking the franchipreneurs of all one. I'm your host, Marty McDermott. I'm the president of Franchise Interviews, and we have a great show today. We're meeting with Jimmy St. Louis, and Jimmy is an entrepreneur, competitive athlete, and businessman. He's currently an operating partner at Aon Capital, Franchise Accelerators, and the founder of Franchise 123. As a founder of Franchise 123, his focus is on creating simple, open market connections between franchise buyers and sellers to advance and improve the success of franchisees and franchisors. I'm going to talk to Jimmy about that more in just a moment on Franchise Interviews. So stick around because we have a great show. Are you one of those special people who are willing to go after your dreams and goals? Are you ready to fulfill that dream of owning your own business with the security of a proven brand? The opportunity to take control of your future and own a Rita's Italian Ice franchise is within your reach. Rita's is seeking success-oriented individuals who are ready to make a change in their life, and Rita's offers unparalleled training and support to assure your success. And did you know the frozen treat industry is a recession-proof industry? Now here's the really good part. Rita's Italian Ice is a unique and amazing taste treat. It's smoother than a snow cone, and it combines ice with real fresh fruit. The real fruit adds dramatically to the taste, and it comes in over 40 flavors. The ice and fruit are mixed on site and made fresh daily, and it is delicious. You'll want to know more about this exciting and successful franchise opportunity. Go to www.ownaritas.com and get all your questions answered. That's www.ownaritas.com to take control of your dreams and future today. You don't want to wait any longer to be a part of this adventure. www.ownaritas.com Hi, this is Connie McDermott, Administrative Assistant for Franchise Interviews, LLC, and you're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews. From Easton, Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia, you're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to a very special edition of Franchise Interviews, where for over 15 years now, we've been asking the franchipreneurs one one. I'm your host, Marty McDermott. I'm the president of Franchise Interviews, and as we were saying earlier, we have a great show today. We're meeting with Jimmy St. Louis, and Jimmy is an entrepreneur, competitive athlete, and businessman. He's currently operating partner at Aon Capital, Franchise Accelerators, and Jimmy's the founder of Franchise 123. Hi, Jimmy. How are you? Welcome to the show. Hey, I'm great. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. It's, it's a pleasure uh, and a privilege to have you on the show today, Jimmy. I always like to ask our guests, where are you calling from today? I'm actually calling from Tampa, Florida. Oh, nice. Okay, fantastic. And, you know, you have – we didn't get to discuss, you know, your amazing background. You, you have an interesting story, uh, Jimmy. I thought, you know, maybe we can kind of go back to, you know, before you got involved in Franchise 123 and Franchise Accelerators and Aon Capital. What were you doing before that? Sure, yeah. Um, yeah possibly a bit of an interesting story, but – really stumbled into uh, into franchising. Prior to franchising, if I was to go back, um, back in 2006 and seven, mm-hmm. I was working on Wall Street, and we, um, we were doing underwriting a family office portfolio, and we ended up assisting to launch a network of, a nationwide network of minimally basic spine surgery centers. We were right. the, the first company to market direct consumer in healthcare through Google AdWords back, you know, back in the day. And um, I went on to start three other healthcare companies all with exits. And I was to walk backwards in 2000, 
15 and 16, I was a member of the United States rowing team. You know, I was living wow. in California, and I uh, was watching the Today Show. And on the Today Show, they did a interview, a surprise interview, with a now franchise company called City Row. Right. And I said, hey, this could be pretty interesting. Uh, you know, I, I obviously enjoy the sport of rowing and and sure. Interest, and I'm an entrepreneur. So I actually reached out to them about opening up a handful of units in, right. um, in the Florida area. And uh, their managing partner, I headed off. And instead of going in the direction of a franchisee, I went more in the direction as a franchisor and mm-hmm. joined them as an operating partner. And we started to notice some challenges within the you know, the space of franchise development. Right. There's some misaligned interests and some challenges. And we uh, we decided to build out essentially what Franchise123 now is, which is Zillow for franchising. And uh, wow. trying to really digitize the, right. uh, the the buying and selling process. And you think about where real estate was 15 years ago, mm-hmm. and you didn't really have a lot of um, – you know, access to to lots and lots of information, and what we're trying to do now is put the the power back in the consumer's hand here, and give people the best information they can, and uh, really help franchisors and franchisees get paired up with the right fits so they can be successful. Right. Yeah, it's 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 such an important service, Jimmy. And you know, he, he, over the years, you know, we I think I've only interviewed maybe about two or three people that have played for the NFL, you know, and I know you get the question all the time, so you're probably tired of answering it, but, you know, what did, what did you learn from that experience or, you know, what did you learn from, uh, you know, uh, sports that you apply to the, to the business world today? Sure. I think I, I would say I, I learned, I'm an NFL and, you know, learned a lot actually in high school and college sports and then with the rowing mm-hmm. team as well. It just, yeah. to me, the, the thing about sports is it really magnifies performance. Uh, end mm-hmm. of the day, you can, Things can look good on paper, and in business, right. it's very easy to have things look good on paper. But <laughs> right. you know, the results are results, and in sports, sure. what matters is the scoreboard. And That's um, true. but to get to that winning side of the column, you've got to have a number of different things. You've got to have the right management. You've got to have the right training. You've got to have the right team that works cohesively together. And I think that analogy, of course, plays into the business world. Uh, you know, right. you may even see teams who have a winning season, but they don't stand the test of time. Things fall apart. People leave the team, yeah. whatever that may be. Same thing in business. You know, I think that sure. it's, it's a, I, I really believe that businesses are like sports teams. I think that yes. having a yeah. really feel is great, but mm-hmm. they're, they're a team and they're a unit, you know, all working together. That's terrific. One of the um, topics you talk about in your presentations, Jimmy, is you answer the question, why consider franchising as a business model? How do you typically answer the question, you know, when you're doing that presentation? Sure. To me, there's you know, you have your traditional startup entrepreneur mm-hmm. who is passionate about a vision that he's created. The right. beauty of franchising is a lot of – it allows you to go towards something that you are passionate about – with a blueprint to do it. Yeah, I do think oftentimes in entrepreneurship, a challenge is when you have a new concept, just being passionate about that concept isn't enough. You've got mm. to surround yourself Powerful. with that, you know, that back office team who's going to handle all the things so you can continue to be that visionary. Franchising right. provides that opportunity for you. And yes. That's why I think we see a lot of people who are come to us and say, hey, you know, I just – exited a company or, hey, I just did this or, hey, I've got some extra money. I'd like to put money in franchise and tell me where to put right. it. And that's, right. that to me is, a, I think, a problem in the industry. It's chasing mm-hmm. the money, what's going to be the highest return. And yeah. we always right. say, now let's go back and let's really understand more about you. For, for right. Get the fact that there's a blueprint. Let's get a company in your hands that you can be passionate about that you love and you'll be able to be very proud of in the future. Right. That's powerful. Do you find, Jimmy, I mean, when people do come to you, do they have some type of preconceived notion? I mean, as towards like, I mean, they're interested in a particular industry and then, you know, by, by speaking to someone like yourself, I mean, do they, are they more open, I guess, to looking at other industries? Initially, the large majority of people have even have a, a company picked out or really? they say, wow. Hey, I've got some extra money. I, right. Yeah. And we, I think we're, we're pretty quick about steering people away from that and saying, okay, that's right. great. That's a good yeah. baseline. But right. now that we have 
on franchise one, two, three, there's 4,000 brands on there. You can compare and contrast all of them. Wow. We help them use that as that initial company as their baseline. We take them through the questionnaires or they can do it through our the software system themselves. As they start to line up businesses side by side, they can go through the exercises to decide, oh, wow, yeah, I, although I may have liked this particular company, this one's a better fit for me and here's why. Right, right. So I, I think that – the way in which our program works is it really gears them towards picking a couple industries, whether mm-hmm. they whether they had pre-picked one or not. This really allows them to see a, a larger landscape of opportunities. Right. It seems like too. I mean, there's so much out there, Jimmy. I, I always wonder how somebody goes about this process alone. You know, I mean, when I first got involved in franchising, I was around like 1999. I think the IFA used to report that there was something like, you know, 1200 different systems in the U S and now, you know, as you mentioned, I mean, there's, there's thousands I've seen like 3,500 you mentioned 4,000 uh, different systems. Uh, where, where should someone begin their research process when they're looking for franchise opportunities? Well, I can provide the the general answer and then a bit of the the more yeah. biased answer. Uh, sure. You know, generally, I think it's important to first understand the landscape of franchising, and mm-hmm. I do believe that it's a complicated process. We still yes. use the analogy of Zillow, and you think about. I'll just say, if you were to go move to a new city, and before mm-hmm. Zillow existed, you'd get in touch with an agent, and that agent would pick you up, and they'd drive you around, they'd hand you a folder right. with. You know, 10 or 12 houses to look at. And that, right. that's it. That's that's right. your research. Yeah. But now with, with Zillow, you, of course, have a whole wealth of information. So now you know yeah. where you want to go, why you want to go there, what fits you, what doesn't fit you. And so it puts right. the power back where you kind of got this single source of truth and the power is back in the hands of the buyer now. Right. So for us, what we recommend is when you go onto our program, you create a quick account, there's a series of six questions, and you'll see that number go from roughly that 4,000 down to about 50 different options based wow. on the questions that you answer. That's amazing. Then you can go in and you can you can say, hey, this looks good, this looks good, maybe line up 10 of them, and then start right. to go through the more robust exercises. That whole process you know, wow. takes an hour, hour and a half, and now sure. you've got maybe five in your hands that you can take a serious look at. I yeah. think that's where the fun begins, but prior, I mean, that may be, there may be four that you've never heard of, but they right. may be a great fit for you. So now right. what we've been able to do is to provide this opportunity to emerging franchisors, but also give franchisees the chance to be a part of something that they will most likely be more successful running and operating Right, because and, and not everyone is cut out for franchising either, Jimmy. I'm sure you, you know you talk about this, you know, in your presentations. But um, do you have those conversations sometimes? I mean, where you're meeting with someone and you say, you know what, I don't think this person is a good fit for franchising. Yes, and I think there's both the question on are they a fit for this franchise, but more importantly, are you a fit for franchising in general? Sure. Right. We, right. we have we have a series of personality tests that we've developed utilizing a, a lot of data. and It gets smarter now over time mm-hmm. as we gather more and more data. But you're right. There's a, a type of personality where somebody wants complete and total autonomy around the vision, the brand, the marketing strategy. And although you might think as an entrepreneur – Hey, great! I can plug into something that's got a, you know, it has a good brand, it's got a good reputation, right? But if you see them, it's difficult because they want to be able to navigate and pivot and move how they want to. And right. for a franchise system that's really run and operated well, they're going to be very strict about what you can and can't do, sure. what goes in your right. door and what doesn't. And those are two different types of people. We do right. recommend though that if you want to have a lot of autonomy and you want to be in franchising, just engage with a franchise that has, you know, 30 or less units. And now right. you've got a little bit more, you know, that, that franchisor has likely not figured it all out yet either. Mm-hmm. And right. so you right. can lean on each other to modify the operating system and to constantly improve. We think that gives entrepreneurs who may want a little bit more autonomy, the opportunity to be involved in franchising uh, without yeah. having to be concerned that they've got this strict playbook to to work right. off of. 
Yeah, that's it's it's very powerful. It's been interesting. I've been doing the the podcast now, Jimmy, for for 15 years. So I mean, I've seen all sorts of industries, and and some of them, you know, I never would have ever thought of, you know, 15 years ago if you told me, you know, this particular industry is going to start franchising. What types of businesses, from your experience, are not a good fit for franchising? Yeah, you know, I think that franchising, of course, covers almost almost every field. And yeah. I think it's it's a bit of a challenging question because mm-hmm. if you look back 10 years ago, the answer would have been very different. Uh, so right. I give the example mm-hmm. of uh, online tech companies who are subscription-based software services. Right. That you may have looked at 10 years ago and say, that does not make any sense to franchise. But you're even seeing right. companies like that begin to franchise because their system says, sell this software in this particular region and since you're in a particular region, now we can franchise that out to you and they right. can run and you know, manage their operating system themselves. So right. I think that that's an interesting question because that's an example of one that you wouldn't have thought would stand the test of time, mm-hmm. uh, but it certainly does. Right. So if I was to brainstorm, you know, I think some some other fields, the reality is if the business is replicable, then you can franchise it. And I think that the beauty of franchising is it gives franchisors the chance to decide how strict they want to be on their on their operating plans. Um, right. And that allows you know them to decide what type of autonomy that you want to have. The area where I have seen franchising become more challenging, in particular mm-hmm. healthcare, would, would be a great example. Of right. course, you've got weight loss facilities. You have um, you know, there's a number of other types of fields where you med spas where franchising makes perfect sense. Right. But in the areas where you need a technical expert to decide what goes in and out of the business, mm, I think those right. are the toughest ones that, that those are the toughest ones to franchise because you really are reliant on that individual as opposed to the system. Yeah, I think that that's a great response. So. Where do you see franchising, Jimmy? I mean, again, you know, we we're talking about, you know, what it was like 10 years ago. But, I mean, if you could look into the future, what's, what's your forecast for the franchise market? I think the most interesting parts or uh, industries within franchising are, one, in home services. I think that mm-hmm. in particular, as the mm-hmm. pandemic really pushed yeah. people into their homes, you're seeing right. people take a lot more pride in what they do. Right. So there's some interesting ones out there. There's some uh, – van-based businesses with a low cost of entry where they go in and for a membership, they go in and change your lights and you know, check out your attic and they tell you all the, all the stuff you should be doing to your house. Right. I think you're going to see franchises like that just begin to explode and largely because yeah. people want to be in their homes and also sure. there's this other side of the equation where individuals may have worked for a company for 25 years and there was some instability because of the pandemic and now they're saying, gosh, I never want to live that life again, I'm right. going to take right. my future in my own hands now. Yeah. So I think home services is something pretty interesting. Uh, anybody that's leveraging technology to improve their, their product, that's going to be mm-hmm. an interesting area. You know, of course, boutique fitness took a hit during the pandemic, but the companies that were able to pivot and to create a digital platform and allow people to not only go to the gym, but also have some home-based exercise you know, programs and give them a consistent routine where they could still optimize their fitness. I think those companies will, will continue to be interesting down the road as well. That's terrific. Are there any other industries that, that you're uh, excited about, Jimmy? I mean, you mentioned a couple of them, but I mean, you know, when you see some, sometimes a particular brand or an industry, you say, wow, that's great. I, I wish I thought of that. Is, do you ever have that going on? Sure. I think uh, educational technology is something mm, that yeah. ed tech is going to be something really interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, re- remote learning opportunities, anybody that's leveraging yeah. that type of technology, uh, not just because people were being educated at home, but if you also think about what – there's some important issues in the world to resolve. And one of those is uh, certain areas of our country, certain areas of the world where individuals just don't have access to education. Right. Right. EdTech is giving that people all over the world that opportunity. So I, I just think that yeah. industry in general, and if somebody can find the right way uh, to leverage an interesting idea and franchise it, I, I believe there's a, a lot of opportunity there. I, I think the 
compound annual growth rate of EdTech is about 28% mm-hmm. right now. And wow. it's just going to continue, I, I believe, to boom. We uh, we had one of the bigger um, educational uh, franchises. I think it was maybe about six months ago on our show, Jimmy. And, and uh, it was interesting as she was telling the story, you know, she was saying, you know, how COVID impacted their industry because they were traditionally – brick and mortar, you know, the, the student would come to the location. And then when COVID happened, of course, you know, they had to pivot, they had to change their model. So they went to that, as you were talking about, you know, the online remote learning, and they were surprised or maybe even pleased. And even their, their, their customers were pleased that they could now get the service from home. They didn't have to go to the brick and mortar location anymore. So there's been, I guess there's, there's been a lot of interesting, I hate to use the word opportunities when you're talking about COVID, but there's been a lot of shifting and pivoting, hasn't there? Yes. I mean, anytime there's, there's a change in the dynamics of our world, there's going to be uh, unique opportunities created. Mm-hmm. And you always right. hear those things. You think, wow, that was smart. They did that, right? That was right. a great idea. And, Right. I love hearing those stories and watching or even being a part of those stories where yeah. you're thinking, you think, and all of a sudden it clicks, wow, this is an opportunity. And to me, I think if, you know, something for the listeners as well, I mean, mm-hmm. opportunities are created because you're solving a problem. Right. right. And I think that's right. an important way to look at these different ventures that people pursue is you're solving a problem. And since you're solving a the problem, there's demand for that. And the unique ones that solve a problem that can really help people, those businesses will yeah. be successful as long as they're operated well with good operators. What do you like most about franchising to me? I mean, it sounds like, you know, today, I mean, you get to be, you really, you get to be a part of, I mean, you're a big part of people's lives. I mean, these, these clients that you're working with, I mean, you're a very big part of their life. Um, so it must be an amazing feeling for you when, when you match someone to a, to a franchise. Um, but, but what do you like most about franchising? Yeah, I think, well, one, I believe, you know, here in the States, I mean, it's, it's a bit of the epitome of the American dream. I mean, yeah. you're really giving people the opportunity to be a business owner. That's, mm-hmm. that's exciting. Um, right. But we're also, in particular with what we're doing, we're solving our problem. And I think what we're doing is we are able to align the interests of franchisors and franchisees and long-term significantly increase the likelihood of success of franchisors and franchisees because people with an open mind have gone through the program and they have been matched up with really what's close to a perfect fit for them. And now it's just a matter of um, being good at running and operating it. In particular, just generally, what I love about franchising, I think, is it's just providing opportunity for people. I think you're giving people the chance to own a business, giving people to take their own career into their own hands, and um, there's a variety of ways you can go about it. You've got people who own and operate one unit, and that's exciting for them, and Mm -hmm. you even see these larger PE firms and companies that are managing larger portfolios who are, uh, you know, they're managing hundreds and thousands of units. And uh, it's just such an interesting field because you do have such a, 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 you know, a diverse type of people that are, that are running and operating businesses in this field. What's, what's next for you, Jimmy? I mean, if you look into a crystal ball, maybe three years, five years down the road, I mean, you're, you're operating partner of Aon Capital and Franchise Accelerators, and, and, and you have Franchise 1, 2, 3. I mean, where do you see these organizations, you know, three to five years down the road? Sure. So I think with Franchise 1, 2, 3, the, the long-term opportunity here and our ambition is to – to revolutionize the field of franchise sales in particular. I think right, right now there's just a lot of misaligned interests. Um, there's, uh, you know, one side makes a lot of money, the other side suffers. Mm-hmm. Uh, one side provides you know, a little bit of a service, the other side doesn't really see the benefit of that service. We're trying to create this more of a blue ocean where now yeah. we provided people not access to 15, but to thousands of opportunities. Right. We've given franchise owners who are emerging the chance to keep some more cash in their balance sheets so they can invest because right. our system is more efficient and cheaper than working directly with, say, a franchise sales organization or within a broker network. And the objective there is to really help to digitize the buying and selling process for franchising. Mm-hmm. I think we fast forward three years, our vision for the company is we've got a sophisticated 
easy to use system to buy and sell franchises. Right. We have an online auction platform that allows franchisees to resell their units when they're ready to, to move on. Right. And the longer term opportunity I believe is we are starting to build out now a um, suite of services for franchisors to plug into that they may not have access to before. So that gives them their, their payroll system, their HR systems, uh, their marketing platform, their CRM. So now when you have a concept, you are able to work with legal, create your FDD uh, file within all the appropriate states, and plug into our suite of services so you can start franchising in you know, a third of the amount of time that it would take you to build out your franchise model before. So we're really just trying to make franchising simple so people mm-hmm. can focus on what they're best at. That's terrific. What's the best way for our listeners to get more information, uh, Jimmy, on, on Franchise 123? Uh, I mean, are there any websites you can go to? I know you had a book, too, didn't you, that you, you recently wrote? Yes. So we have the Franchise Success. That's available on Amazon. We're also working with Morgan James as a publisher, and you'll, see, you'll start seeing our copies within the next couple of months in the larger bookstores, including Barnes & Noble. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can go to franchise123.com. Okay. Start searching around, and that's the best way to learn more about us. That's terrific. Well, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed talking to you today, Jimmy, and I'd already like to invite you back if it's okay in the next year or two as you continue to grow because I think you have a wonderful service at Franchise123. Well, that's we'd love to be back and talk about the progress and hopefully we have a lot of great success stories. And I appreciate the time here as well. I very much enjoyed it. This has been my pleasure, Jimmy. We'll be right back with more franchise interviews. Coming up on segment two, you're going to hear what every franchisepreneur needs to know before buying a franchise. We're going to play a clip from our popular Great Quotes and Franchising podcast right here on Franchise Interviews. Franchisers, are you looking to reach aspiring entrepreneurs looking to buy a franchise? Are you looking to reach a highly educated audience on franchising? Franchise Interviews, an up-close, behind-the-scenes look at franchising and entrepreneurship through our website, FranchiseInterviews.com, where you can hear and read interviews as well as get tips from some of the most successful sources in franchising. Our weekly franchise radio show where each week you get to hear a new interview with franchisers, franchisees, franchise authors, franchise experts and attorneys, and our podcast, Great Quotes in Franchising. For more information, go to FranchiseInterviews.com or call us at 610-905-2919. That's 610-905-2919. Hi, everyone. This is Marty McDermott, the president of Franchise Interviews, and welcome to another edition of Great Quotes in Franchising, where each podcast you get to hear a great quote in franchising. You know, we've been hosting Franchise Interviews many years now, and during that time, we've had some incredible quotes on our show. Today's Great Quote in Franchising podcast comes from Mary Jane Riva, the CEO of Pizza Factory. And Mary Jane gave some great advice. You know, one of the questions we frequently ask on the show when we have someone like Mary Jane is what advice would you give to our listeners in their quest to buy a franchise? And she said that you should look under the hood. And, you know, I thought her advice was very original, but you have to listen to the podcast to find out why. So here we go with Mary Jane Riva, CEO of Pizza Factory. Hi, franchise. You know, we've been doing the show such a long time now, and and one of the, the biggest things we've learned is that, you know, a lot of our listeners and their quest to buy a franchise, they don't know where to begin because, like you were saying earlier, there, there's so much out there today. You know, I mean, there's just yeah. so much to choose from. Most of them don't even know where to begin. It just becomes overwhelming. Yep. You know, from everything you've learned, you know, up to this point, what advice would you give to our listeners? Well, the first, there's a couple things, and one that as, as we're going through this journey ourselves from being a franchisee to the franchisor, it's understanding the roles of the franchisor versus mm-hmm. the franchisee. That's a really big, important, really what is the role that you're playing versus a franchisor. And then when right. you're looking at brands, the other thing for brands to me is is really looking under the hood. Don't just sure. look at all the stuff on the surface. Really dig down. Uh, see what extra charge is there. You know, are they marking up stuff? You know, really evaluate a brand to a brand and not just the fluff kind of stuff that you see on the top. And it's a lot of due diligence. Right. But, you know, ask, ask the questions that are, that are going to be once you're in there. You know, are they marking up the food product? 
Are they marking up advertising materials? You know, what what are you paying? So really, really dig down and ask um, a lot more questions. And right. I would talk. To, I would talk to a lot of franchisees that are in the system, and see how they feel about the franchisor and the the brand itself. I would do a lot of due diligence with franchisees because they're the ones that are going to tell you. Right. Absolutely. I love how you said look under the hood. You know, I, I mentioned doing the show such a long time. I've never heard that analogy before. I think that's very clever to look under the hood, you know, to go deep, you know, mm-hmm. inside and look what's under, not yeah. just what's on top. You know, we have this great quote in yeah. franchising. I'm going to put that one in there because uh, I, I, I think that's fantastic. You know, it makes a lot of sense. And, you know, Pizza Factory, I mean, you have a lot of franchisees that you can call, right? I mean, I think you're up to, is it over a hundred yes. franchisees now, Mary yes. Jane? So there's yeah. plenty of people We've got you know, that, that have... oh, good. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I was going to say we oh, we have them. They've been in the system for they've been in the system for 30 years. We have franchisees, you know, that've been in that long, and we have them that are just getting on. So there's a wide range. So and you want to hit right. all those, you know, you want to hit the newbies, you want to hit the older ones, you want yes. to want to get their feel of what's been going on and how they've been treated. And but, but yeah, it's there's a lot of people to call. There's a lot of people to ask. There's a lot of different town sizes. So when you're doing mm-hmm. your due diligence. Right. You know, really, really, really get out there and, and dig deep. If you'd like to hear that whole interview with Pizza Factory, all you have to do is go to FranchiseInterviews.com, go to our Franchise Interviews by Category page, and click on Food Franchises, and you can hear the whole interview there. And lastly, we'd just like to thank everyone for making this podcast such a huge success. You know, it's hard to imagine when we started the show that our Great Quotes and Franchising podcast was going to become just as big as our regular show. So we want to thank everyone again and continue to listen to our Great Coast and Franchising podcast sponsored by Franchise Interviews. Take care, everyone.